Welcome traders to another Tick Mill weekly market outlook for week commencing the 16th of January with me, Patrick Munnerly, starting in the US. Obviously, US markets are offline today for the Martin Luther King holiday. But the focus this week is really how the markets are going to start anticipating the Federal Reserve meeting for February and whether or not we are going to see a 25 basis point move or a 50 basis point move. After uh, 425 basis points of rate hikes so far, there is a strong chance that it chooses to uh, step down to the more traditional 25 basis point increments, given most of the policy tightening work is already done, and there are broadening signs that the economy is responding to it. However, inflation remains well above that 2% target, and the labour market remains tight with unemployment rates back to a cycle low of 3.5%. If it does choose to go for a 25 basis point move, uh, we can expect it to strongly state that this is not the end of the rate hike cycle and that a further 25 basis points in March would likely still be on the cards. This would leave the ceiling of the Fed funds target range at 5%, which most believe will mark the peak. In terms of data flow this week, an important influence on the decision Data calendar includes retail sales, industrial production, housing transactions, and producer price inflation. The activity numbers are likely to be soft, with retail sales dragged down by a big fall in auto sales in December, while squeezed household incomes and bad weather may also help to dampen spending. Industrial production is also likely to have fallen, given the weakness that uh, has been seen in key surveys, such as the ISN manufacturing report, whose uh, production component fell into contraction sub-50 territory for the first time since May 2020. Some offsets should come from the utility subcomponent, given much colder weather, but lower oil prices may have weighed on mineral extraction. Inevitably, the housing market data will be weak, given that mortgage rates have more than doubled over the past 12 months, making a property purchase even less affordable. Given the swing in the market from excess demand towards excess supply, falling transactions will also be accompanied by lower home prices. Moving to the charts in terms of the technical setup, dollar index tested into that 101.50 level overnight. We've seen a bit of a bid come into the market as European traders have walked in here. Uh, obviously, we've got reduced liquidity with US trading desks offline today. So what I'm ultimately looking for is whilst prices are capped uh, below 102.50, looking for one more push down into this 101.20, uh, 101 level to complete a sequence here, five-way sequence to the downside. And as long as we maintain momentum divergence here, I'm still looking for a three-way corrective move to ultimately test up into the 104. Uh, which is the high volume node, and then we have that descending trend channel resistance 10450s. At this stage, any loss of the 101 handle would be uh, yet another bearish development, opening the move down towards the psychological 100 level. Now, moving to the Eurozone, particularly uh, light on uh, data events this week for the uh, single currency region. Tuesday, we get German ZEW survey. Investment sentiment is likely to show uh, further signs of improvement and hopes that inflation will fall are boosting the outlook while equity mark the equity market's strong starts uh, in 2023 will certainly uh, be a buoy to uh, morale in the region. And then heading into Thursday, we get the ECB policy accounts. Uh, transcripts and the minutes are expected to reveal discussions about the size and timing of future rate hikes as well as QT. Updated staff forecasts lifted inflation projections and showed a shallow recession. The ECB raised rates uh, slower pace at 75 basis points at the December meeting. From a technical perspective, looking for the euro dollar to make one more push up into the 109 level. Uh, from there, similar, well, the inverse setup really to the dollar index, as long as we maintain some momentum divergence, I'm anticipating that that test 109 to 10950 should complete this uh, initial cycle. And then I'm looking for a three-way corrective move to develop. And certainly I'd be thinking about a move back into our current potential wave four low, which would see us testing just below 105. And then from there, we'll see if bulls step back into the upside. At this stage, it would take a close through uh, 109.80 to open up further upside extension into 
the, uh, the daily R3s up here, 111.50 is the next upside objectives. But like I say, looking for a 109 test, maintain momentum divergence and get a pullback into that uh, just below 105. Moving to the UK, and um, in terms of data for this week, Tuesday we get jobs data, the BOE will look at this data through the lens of whether labour shortages are easing and whether wage pressures are still just as persistent as ever. So far the jobs market has shown few signs of deterioration other than a gradual reduction in the number of unfilled vacancies. We'll be watching for any hints of redundancies increasing as firms battle higher energy costs and interest rates Though markets suspect these will remain low for the time being. Meanwhile, regular pay growth has been running at 7 to 8% on an annualized basis, and that's consistent with recent readings coming from the BOE's own decision maker survey. For now, this is the strongest argument in favor of another 50 basis points rate hike at the next BOE meeting. On Wednesday, we'll get headline CPI, which uh, hopefully has peaked, but is likely to remain double digits through early 2023, but the bank's favoured measure of core services inflation, perhaps the cleanest gauge of domestically driven price pressures, has edged higher in recent months, and this will be key. Signs that this is reaching a peak would boost the case for a more modest rate hike in February. Round out the week on Friday with UK retail sales. Until November, retail figures had risen by roughly 4% in value terms through 2022, but fallen by an even greater percentage in volumes neatly encapsulating the cost of living squeeze that's dominating the UK outlook so far this year. While further quarter GDP, well, fourth quarter GDP uh, came in flat, partly thanks to an artificial bounce in activity after the Queen's funeral bank holiday, the first quarter output is likely to show material decline, thanks in part to weaker retail numbers. Markets expect a small bounce back in December, though that's likely uh, to reflect volatility surrounding Christmas spending more than anything else. From a technical perspective, Sterling, we are looking for a move into this 123 handle, just above 123. That represents 78.6% retracement of the last decline and uh, the 161 extension from our current swing cycle here. So what I'm looking for is support to be maintained for now, at just above the 21, 2130 area and for price to extend into this 123 zone. As long as we maintain momentum divergence there, I'll be watching for bearish reversal patterns to see a pullback. And I'd be looking for something back into initially the 117 handle. And then from there, we'll see if, uh, if bulls are going to pick up the ball again and make a run up into this big weekly trend line resistance coming in at 127.60s. At this stage, it would really take a loss of 120.50 to suggest a deeper pullback which would have us down into the 120 handle. Okay, moving to Japan. And in terms of data, we get on Wednesday, November machine orders, 5.4% uh, print last time out. Strong start to Q4, but volatility is likely to linger. We'll also get November industrial production, negative 0.1%, and that's the final estimate. And uh, more importantly, on Wednesday, we will get this Bank of Japan meeting. Bank of Japan now is widely expected to stand pat after last month's shock decision to widen the yield curve band. Governor Kuroda's forward guidance is likely to remain dovish, but inflation forecasts could be raised. The market is pricing in additional normalization steps from the next governor who will be announced later this month and will take its first meeting in April. From a technical perspective, the dolly yen tested a monthly projected range support 127.19, which is our target there. Getting a decent little bounce here. I'm looking for any three wave moves back into the pivot and these prior swing lows 129.50, sending trend line resistance 129.80. Watch for bearish reversal patterns there to engage on the short side. And I'm looking for a move down into this descending uh, trend channel support, looking at a test just above 125. At this stage, really take a close back through 130 to uh, suggest a deeper corrective move back up into the high volume node and descending trend channel resistance coming in 132.40s. Okay, let's check in down under with the Australian data sheet for the week ahead. And we are looking at a pretty scant data slate for Australia. Do get 
Um, consumer sentiments on Tuesday, 80.3. Uh, finished 2022 at recessionary levels. Then heading into Thursday, the main data point of note really for Australia this week is the employment change. Looking for a 20k print there. Uh, the unemployment rate to stay anchored around 3.4%. Uh, the leading indicators have eased a touch, but they remain consistent with trend employment and steady unemployment. That's the only data of note down under. So let's take a look at the charts here, the technical setup. Uh, the Aussie dollar has pulled back to test wedge support at the 69.40. As this area holds, I'm looking for an extension to the upside to target a test above the 70 handle. Uh, from there, I am looking for a pullback, uh, broadly in line with the idea that we get a dollar correction and uh, an actual way on the Aussie. So I've been looking for something uh, in the line towards the 67 handle. From there, though, I will be watching for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side. But I'm also looking... Uh, a test of this weekly descending trend line resistance coming in just above the 73 handle as the next upside objective. At this stage, it would really take a loss of the 68.50 to suggest the correction is already underway. Total to move back into the high volume mode, 66.80s, and ascending trend channel support, 66.40s. Last but not least, let's check in with Bitcoin. Bitcoin being on a bit of a tear uh, over. Well, since the, the start of this year, really. And we can see that we have this upside extension looking like it's impulsive. So I'm looking for any pullbacks now into the 20,300 area. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side. Looking for a move up into 22,200, which broadly co uh, comes in line with the weekly uh, trend line resistance here, 22,360. So from there, I'll be watching for three wave corrected moves and then we'll see if, uh, if this move is actually going to deliver further upside. On the daily chart, we could see the potential for an inverse head and shoulder scenario to develop. So move back into this 18,300 would be the base there if we are going to extend higher in, uh, in Bitcoin. Otherwise, if we hold the trend channel, could easily be back trading into that 17,000 level representing the high volume mode on the weekly charts. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 16th of January. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.